I think the the kind of coolest and simplest piece of maths that I've ever come across is probably the Monty Hall problem. It's so counterintuitive when you first hear about it, it doesn't feel obvious. But when you start looking at the formula and the mathematics behind it, it makes such simple sense that it's crazy. We should probably explain it though. So to introduce this, this is from a game show uh, where essentially there's three doors and you don't know what's behind them. But you're trying to win a car, so one of them has a car behind and two of them have these goats or goat lookalike creatures anyway. And essentially, you pick a door. Let's say we pick door number one, right? To start with, there's a third chance that there's a car behind the door that you pick. So we've picked door number one. Now let's say that the host, Mr. Monty, uh, opens door number three for you. He now says, do you want to stick with your choice of door number one, or do you want to switch and choose door number two? And most people tend to get this wrong. In fact, in some studies, it was as low as like 13% of people made the right choice here. I think intuitively, once one door with the goat behind it is taken out of the question, people assume that there's a 50-50% chance that the car is behind the door that you've already chosen. And then I'm sure psychologically people have their lucky numbers or they're stubborn and they don't want to change given the choice. So the reason why it's not actually a 50-50 chance of the car being behind the door that you originally picked is because Monty Hall is always going to open a door that has a goat behind it, right? He's still got to give you the opportunity to win a car. So let's just think about this quite simply. If you picked door one and Monty opened door three, you're going to be better off if you switch. In the same way, if you picked door three, Monty would have to open door one, and again, you'd be better off if you switched. However, if you picked door two, it wouldn't matter which one Mr. Monty opened, and in this case, you'd actually be better off staying. But you're only better off staying with your choice in one out of the three examples that you've got here. So your probability of winning is always going to be higher if you switch. So if you're looking for a more rigorous or mathematical way of showing this, you can actually use an equation known as Bayes' theorem. So Bayes' theorem, um, which I can write on now, says the probability of an event A happening given some event B can be written as the probability of event B happening given A times the probability of A happening over the sum of all of these, let's call them subset probabilities, A uh, probability B given A times so probability of A, sorry, these are eight I's. So that includes this A above, but there's some other ones as well. So in this case, we're gonna say that C I is the probability that the car is behind door I, and that, well, we're only interested in M3, so Monty's gonna open door number three. So what we want to do is say the probability that the car is behind door one, so the door that we've already chosen, given that Monty opens door number three, and this is gonna be given by the probability that Monty opens door number three, given that the car is actually behind door number one, times the probability that car is behind door number one, plus the, that and the other alternative. So I'll just write it out here quickly. Monty opening door three. Sorry, I'll come over here. Car two. And you'll notice that in the bottom, I haven't written down the probability that Monty opens door three given the car's behind door three because he's never gonna reveal the prize. He's always gonna show you a goat at that first step. So we can assume that that probability is zero. So now we just need to work out the value of each of these probabilities in this equation. So we know that independently, the probability that the car is behind door one is a third. And we know that the probability of Monty opening door three, given that the car is behind door one, is a half, right? If the car was here, he could open this door or this door, and it wouldn't matter. So it's a half times a third on the top. Now on the bottom, we've got the same thing again. So a half times a third. But now we have to add the probability that Monty opens door three, given that the car is behind door two. In this case, he's always gonna open door three, right? He has to show you a goat, so that's one times the probability that the car is behind door two, again, a third. And if you work this out, this is going to be equal to one third. And the simplest way now to know what your probability is of finding a car behind door two instead of door one is to just do one minus a third, which gives you two thirds, double the probability of the car being behind door two rather than door one. I've forgotten how to draw a goat like this. It has a horn.